Both these players off to a great start here at 4-0. Hawkins right now, if we start the player championship, he's the last person in. Mm -hmm. So this is a very, very, very important tournament for him. And so he's off to a really, really good start here. Players are being given the green light. They will resolve their mulligans. And we will watch them play. Team Delver, the old legacy standby, and Storm. Well, no surprise to see this deck doing well. Did get a new card, actually, as Hawkins is going to start here with Ponder in Dark Petition. Okay. Which looks to be pretty good in this deck. Not a card you're going to play a lot of, but Hawkins does have one this week, and he's also got two copies of Past in Flames as, re as he resolves a Ponder. Some people like to play their win conditions in the main deck. Some people opt to go to the Burning Wish package, play their win conditions in the sideboard. Hawkins does have a main deck copy of Tendrils of Agony. And I'll give him this. Good penmanship. Yep. Good on you, Eric. Pondered unresolving. We're going back Dane Yeager's way. Going to have to put that land in the back. Here's a Nimble Mongoose. He's got pressure. It's not a Delver, but it's pretty good. Force of Will plus blue card. Lightning Bolt lands Harmagoyf the, the leftovers for Dane. Not a, not a bad hand, but uh, you would think if you're new to the Legacy format, that this hand would be a lock against a combo deck. You have a fast clock backed up by one counterspell. Not the case. It's a brainstorm here from Hawkins. He's already put his two cards back pretty quick. And now he'll sacrifice that Delta. Let's see what land Eric wants to search up here. When you are playing against a Delver deck, and when anyone starts with a Nimble Mongoose off a Tropical Island, you know exactly what you're playing against if you're well-versed in this format. Basics are pretty important because you do not want to get wastelanded. Mm -hmm. So he's going to search up a basic swamp here. And every mana matters for Eric here because he is trying to play around Daze and Spell Pierce the whole time he's going through his operation. So uh, Wasteland really magnifies the power level of those soft counter spells. And if Hawkins can play around them without costing himself too much in the way of development, he'll, he'll take those opportunities. Here is a duress from Hawkins. So we're going to get a good look at his hand here. He's got a Tarmogoyf, a Lightning Bolt, Ponder, Force of Will. They get two Lightning Bolts and then a Flooded Strand. So that Force of Will is looking pretty nice. And this is a pretty classic setup here from Storm. Manipulate the first two turns, try to strip away a counter spell if it happens to be there, go for the kill next turn. Hawkins will record all this information before selecting a card with the Duress. And as you mentioned, this is the kind of hand that if you're a team or Delver, you're going to keep it every time. Exactly. This, good this, hand. this looks like a good anti-combo hand. You have a one drop, a two drop, some lightning bolts to shore up, shorten up the game, a force of will with a cantrip that you can cast in the event that you draw another blue spell. He's going to take the ponder. Maybe a little surprise there. Well, it leaves Jaeger without a blue card to pair with the force of will. I guess the thought there, too, is, you know, if I take the Force Will, he's going to 100% cast the Ponder next turn. Yep. Maybe he casts the Ponder into something that's good. So I can, I can, get, I can see why the decision was made. Flood of Strand going to be sacrificed. It's definitely better if he has another discard spell to back it up. Absolutely. If he's going to just try to go for the win next turn, it's a little bit risky if he doesn't have a plan in the event that Jaeger was able to draw a blue card. But, uh, you know, if he is backing up with another discard spell, take the cantrip. Force Jaeger to draw a blue card. And then make him discard again. Exactly. Yeah. Here's Tarmogoyf. A couple different types of cards in the graveyard right now. I believe Tarmogoyf's checking in at a 3-4. Cabal Therapy, the draw there for Hawkins. So he knows what he wants to name with that type of card, too. The question is, is it go time here for Eric? Though, for what it's worth, his life total's pretty high. He's not in that much of a rush. Depends how he's planning on going off. If he has a kill via Past in Flames, then he can be very liberal taking these shots. If he has to try to go off via Ad Nauseam, the points of damage do matter. You, you, you can run up against it uh, if your initial hits off of the Ad Nauseam are unfortunate. The Taxian Probe. I'll show you Force of Will, Volcanic Island, and two copies of Lightning Bolt. So this Cabal Therapy is going to be uh, pretty nice. Misty Rainforest here from Hawkins. Going to bring him down to 17. See what land Eric wants to search up. Get himself an underground sea. Hawkins, uh, this is the... Uh, we've seen him on camera a couple times now this year. Uh, you're going to beat me to it, aren't you? He does not mess around with the cards that he's playing I was going to say the same thing. His decks are always nice. Guru Basics, Beta Underground Sea, Foil Fetchlands. 
Pretty nice collection here for this gentleman. Yes. You a fan of Guru Lands? Again, they're a little too... A little flashy for you, aren't they're they? They're a little too flashy for yep. me. I don't mind them. I, I do go with them from time to time, but I try to stay away. Hawkins considering a Cabal Ritual, though it doesn't have Threshold just yet. Six cards in the graveyard. Looks like he'll play this one, though. So you got our spell count and some mana. We'll gain some more mana here, three spells now. And now an ad nauseum. So just one black mana floating. Spells four. High life total, but he's already made a land drop this turn. Mm -hmm. So really would be helpful for him to find things like Lion's Eye Diamond, for example. Which he did find since he's dividing top. Preordain, Cabal Ritual in there, now Cabal Therapy, a brainstorm now. Lotus Petal is the big hit. Yes. That's the one he's really looking for. Infernal Tutor. He's taken eight so far. So we'll make sure that life total is correct for you guys as we go down. Probe. Brings him down to eight. Dark Ritual brings him down to seven. Dark Ritual is a good find because he's got a black mana floating. Now Dark Ritual probably gets him there because he can Dark Ritual, play the Lion's Eye Diamond, break the Lion's Eye Diamond in response to the Infernal Tutor, become Hellbent. That's enough mana to do what he's got to do. And he's going to stop exactly at Dark Ritual. So in that situation, Dark Ritual is a great find, as is Lotus Petal. Yeah. So these Storm decks do get themselves in situations when casting Ad Nauseam where they have to find Lotus Petal. That was not the case because the black mana was floating. So there's... Alliance Eye Diamond, that's spell five. Dark Ritual is spell number six. Hawkins up now a little higher. Here's Cabal Ritual. Yeah, he just got it here on Tendrils. You know, he can storm up and tutor. And he's got Probe, too. So this all makes it pretty easy. Draw a card. Spell nine. And break this with Infernal Tutor on the stack. And we have seen this song and dance from Storm before. And now he's just going to search up the old tendrils. You see, they're just making sure the spells count is correct here. But Eric has more than enough spells at this point. Yep. And even if he was short, he could just float red. He'll get passed in flames. Run Do through this. Up, run through it all again. Yep. And there's no way he's going to be short on mana at this point, and uh, he can just get to, to ten spells pretty easily this turn and win the game. Many tendrils, all targeting you, Dane Yeager. And that'll take care of this particular game. So Eric Hawkins is going to win game number one here over Dane Yeager. Storm up a game over Teamer Delver. Pretty impressive stuff there from the Storm deck. And, you know, that's a good draw there from Jaeger. He had a creature to start the game off with. He had a little bit of cantrips, had a little bit of permission, but Eric was able to easily work through that. Exactly. And then, you know, like, like you said, that's a hand you're happy with every single time of your Dane. It's a matchup you're typically happy with as well, but um, here it was just way too explosive a draw from Hawkins, and the discard spells were a lot to handle. Well, now we take a look at the sideboards here for each player. We'll start with Dane Yeager and two Crows and Grips, a Sylvan Library, a Pithing Needle, a Surgical Extraction, two Rough and Tumbles, a Life of the Loam, two Pyroblast, a Flusterstorm, a Software Elemental, a Grafficker's Cage, and two copies of Submerge. You can get on board pretty easily with the two copies of Pyroblast and the Flusterstorm here. Some some more counter spells helpful. Uh, Grafficker's Cage has got some game here. And you can even bring in Surgical Extraction. There are spots where you can just beat them with a Surgical. Yeah, I mean, if you have enough garbage to sideboard out, I think you can bring that Surgical in and be somewhat happy with it, actually. Well, there's four copies of Lightning Bolt, two Dismembers, and a Fire Ice, which are all very easy for Yaker to cut in this matchup. Other side of things here for Hawkins, he's got three Abrupt Decays, two Disfigures, two Empty the Warrens, two Xanted Swarm, a Tropical Island to help cast some of these green cards here in the sideboard, Dread of Night, two copies of that, a Chain of Vapor, Rebuild, and a Flusterstorm. So this is the this is the interesting thing. Xanted Swarm is very effective against decks that are all on counter spells, but it's likely that Jaeger has removal spells left in his deck. If Hawkins thinks that there's no bolts left over, Xanted Swarm's a great card to bring in. Otherwise, it's pretty risky. I, I think that the two copies of Empty the Warrens are solid in this matchup. Jaeger has no sweepers in his deck, you would assume. And if Jaeger is trying to overload on counter spells, Empty the Warrens is a way to win the game, even only resolving five or six spells in one turn. Well, those are the options there for both players. Eric Hawkins currently up again, so Dane Jaeger will be on the play here for game number two. In the meantime, we will talk about Patrick Chapin, the innovator, coming off of a 13th place finish at the last Pro Tour Battle for Zendikar.
And while these books probably helped them, it's the next level library. Absolutely. We have two books available, the next level deck building, which focuses on deck building, and next level magic, which focuses on playing the game. They're for players of all ability levels, available on paperback and ebook right now at starcitygames.com slash next level. The innovator, the Hall of Famer, another good Pro Tour on the resume there for Chapin, playing Esper Control at the Pro Tour. Yes, along with uh, Matt Sperling and Paul Rietzel. Yeah. Paul had a solid performance as well. Matt was, I believe, X and one after day one, but faltered in day two. Esper looks like a deck that's positioned pretty well moving forward. I know we got the big three in standard with the Tarka Red, Green White Megamorph, and of course Jeskai Black, but Esper seems like a deck that the tools all seem to be there. And something that Chapin focused a lot in his article about the Pro Tour experience was playing faster. Huge part of playing control decks in big tournaments. Well, those are the options there for both players. You saw the sideboards on the screen. Now we talk a little bit more about Eric Hawkins, a player who we're starting to see a little bit more here on the Open Series, 31 years old, from St. Paul, Minnesota. He's got one Open Series top eight on the resume. A lot of his work has been through the IQ circuit in his local area. Makes a living by playing Magic. We can tell with the old collection there. Yes, That's for sure. He's got some pretty nice cards. Also a poker player. Uh, apparently loves to publicly sing songs from Disney movies, and who can blame him because Disney songs are great. And he's a sports guy. I've actually talked to him about basketball quite a bit. He's a big, pretty big basketball fan, though it's going to be a tough season, I think, for his Timberwolves out there. It'll at least be fun to watch. That's true. Yeah. Probably have the Rookie of the Year out there. Good chance. Carl Anthony Towns. Get to watch Ricky Rubio. Hopefully he doesn't get hurt this year. That would be nice. Andrew Wiggins, your two on his development. Yeah. It's okay to root for bad teams. It's, it's fine when teams are bad, but at least there's the promise of a future. And I got to give the Timberwolves a lot of credit. Their commentators are fantastic. Yeah. They make their games very watchable. Even though the team is horrible, their commentators, they use advanced stats, and they're really honest when the team is playing bad. There's no homerism, mm -hmm. which I can truly appreciate. Though sometimes homerism is great. It just depends. Yeah, it's just, there's, a, there's a real balance. Like your, your Clippers guy, Ralph, mm -hmm. big time homer. Not, not compared oh. to the... What, you, compared to what? The Lakers broadcast? Very true. <laughs> very true. The other, the other broadcast in Los Angeles? That's very true. Those guys are pretty tough, actually. Yeah. I just think R Ralph is a pretty big homer, but he's also just really funny, so it's okay. Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a funny old man. Also, Ralph is just a great name, so that automatically gets you a pass. Ralph is a great name for a funny old man. <laughs> also true. <laughs> it's perfect. Danny Yeager is going to start off with a nimble mongoose in game number two. For Hawkins, he started things off with an island. Now he's got a Lotus Petal. Are we, are we moving pretty quick here? Not just a ponder. That doesn't mean he's not moving this turn. That's true. Yeah, take a look at those three. He's got a couple copies of Lion's Eye Diamond and another Lotus Petal in hand. This could get a little scary here. And he's going to shuffle. All right. As someone who has been killed on turn one by Storm several times, his hand has the makings of one of, that could potentially get there. As do the kind of emotions with how he's played his spells, too. I'd be a little nervous. I think he might have a Gataxi and Probe to check to see if the path is clear, too. Either way, mystery card coming here for Hawkins off of the Ponder. Picked up another Ponder. He'll just pass the turn back now. Stifle the draw here for Jaeger. An attack for one will bring Hawkins down to 18. The ideal threat is, of course, Delver of Secrets, and it flips on turn number two, and then you're attacking for three a turn to really pressure your opponent. Mongoose is a fine backup threat, but you just want to get started on turn one. Exactly. It's, you know, you would take Delver of Secrets. It's the faster clock of the two, but uh, you, just, you don't care as long as it's something. There's Tarmoglyph. So here's in a tap out, kind of cross his fingers. Does have a daze in hand. Cabal therapy of the draw. Here's another ponder. Eager's hand right now. He's got a stifle, daze, and more mongoose. I think maybe the surgical extraction might be hanging out in his hand right now. So pretty good hand. Tarmogoyf out there on the battlefield. We'll get its power and toughness for you guys. Let our Tarmogoyf die. Make sure we know just how big that threat is, see what kind of clock we've actually got going here on the table. Hawkins will keep with his ponder. And now here's a Cabal Therapy. Curious to see what Eric would want to name here. Most likely it is Force of Will. Think so? 
Not a guarantee, but it's the most likely. We'll get confirmation after he does select a card. Looks like Jaeger's going to daze this. This is interesting play. Because if Hawkins wants to resolve this, he's got to cash in his Lotus Petal. Exactly. And, so. and you know, if, if Hawkins gets to see Jaeger's hand and see that there's not a lot going on except for the Stifle, then Hawkins can be very aggressive going for the kill next turn. Mm -hmm. Part of this is just an effort for Jaeger to conceal information. And uh, if he happens to get a Lotus Petal for his troubles here, that's better than nothing. I like this days here by Dane. I do too. He's actually going to get the job done, and if he does want to pay for it, he's got to name the right card, which is unlikely, and he loses his Lotus Petal. And, and Jaeger's hand is so vulnerable right now that I don't think he can afford to show it to Hawkins. Yeah. Here comes an attack for... It would be for... Sylvan Library was the draw. He's going to deploy that. And what I really like about this... So I like the Silver Library play a lot too, because he's just repping Force Will super hard right now. So he's just going to say, I'll tap out again, because I have Force Will plus blue card in my hand. We know that not to be true, but Eric doesn't know that. Yes. So I actually like casting Silver Library a lot there, because also if he gets to take another turn, he's going to gas up with Silver Library, or at least try to. The concern that I have with this play, I probably would have played the Nimble Mongoose myself, although I appreciate what you, your argument here of this represents Force of Will the hardest, is that Stifle is, is greater than zero disruption. He could have played Nimble Mongoose, left up one mana, is still repping Force of Will and Spell Pierce, and can actually cast the Stifle. Sure. Now, with, with the hand revealed, it's now, now he's got nothing going on except for the Surgical Extraction, which should not be that hard for Hawkins to work around if he's got a hand that can go off. Force of Will was the name there from Hawkins. Not much of a surprise there. I suppose the question now is, does Hawkins have the goods to go off? He's got Infernal Tutor in his hand. He's also got two Lion's Eye Diamonds. I believe there's also a fluster storm over there. If he plays the two Lion's Eye Diamonds and Infernal Tutors and Float Six and go against Ad Nauseam, he's at 14, he has not made a land drop, and he's got a mana floating. Those are pretty good odds to be able to go for a kill. And because of Stifle, it gets problematic next turn. Yeah, you don't want him to untap. And what Silver Library could bring, too. Exactly. Yeah. So he's got a lot of looks at it, and the Stifle could be problematic. So uh, if I'm in his spot, assuming it's two Lion's Eye Diamonds and an Infernal Tutor, I'm going for it. The thing that's tough here, however, is, all right, so you do what you say, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to play. He plays a Lotus Petal here, too. He's going to play a Lion's Eye Diamond. Maybe he'll play both of them, crack it, play Infernal Tutor, get Ad Nauseam, do all that jazz. All right, I'm going to Surgical your Infernal Tutors. That does put some pressure on him to be able to draw naturally well. You have to do it with Tendrils or Pass and Flames, then. Infernal Tutor's out the window, and you don't have any in your deck, then. And that means Pass and Flames might not even be good enough. Although it's possible, if Hawkins has brought in Empty the Warrens, that he has a lot of looks at that card. That's fair. And, and Empty the Warrens here, it's not exactly a kill this turn, but he can probably do it for enough to win the game over the next two turns. So here's Infernal Tutor going to break both of these LEDs, it looks like. We'll see what mana Eric wants. He's going to lose his hand. The last card in his hand was a Flusterstorm. He's got some black and some red floating. Looks like three of each. And now that spell is on the stack. Now if I'm Dane, I don't want to move here from this Infernal Tutor. I don't think. I don't think he needs to move. I don't think so either. I mean, what, what would you want to tag at this point? You know, is it the Lotus Petal? It's one of the better cards in his graveyard, I guess, at this point to find to kickstart a set of rituals. But I think you just got to wait here. Because you are correct. If there's no Infernal Tutor in the deck, Hawkins has to hit something fairly specific to be able to win the game this turn. Yeah, Jaeger is thinking about using the Surgical Extraction. And the spell count right now is at five. So the one thing that I think Dane it might be thinking about is, okay, like, if I, you know, you could, you could maybe chain, like, Infernal Tutor in a, into an Infernal Tutor into an Infernal Tutor or something like that. But he can't, he can't Surgical this one just yet. Mm -hmm. But he also has to be careful, too, because if he, if he plays Surgical, it adds to the Storm count. Yep. So 
there are some interesting things taking place here about how Jaeger's supposed to use the surgical extraction. But with Hawkins at 14 and already having five spells, and I'm assuming he's getting ad nauseum here, I don't think Jaeger can be that concerned about adding to the storm count because the storm count's probably going to be high enough to kill Jaeger if Hawkins finds any of his kill cards. Hawkins might be thinking of chaining together Infernal Tutors. And that's, that's what he's going to get with the first one. So he says, I'm going to cast this one. Do you have a response? And now that's spell number six. Now this is really interesting. Uh -huh. yeah, you, see, you see what's going to happen? I do see what's happening. If he surgicals, if he surgicals right now, he kills himself. Yes. Because first of all, surgical costs two life, which we can't forget. So that would bring Yeager down to 16. But surgical, this, this Infernal Tutor, I believe, is spell number seven. And Surgical will be spell number eight, and then Tendrils will be spell number nine. So if he Surgicals, no, oh, no. Yep. Oh, dear. Hawkins, tr uh, hawked him, Hawkins walked him right into this. Yep. Because, you know, if he goes for Ad Nauseam straight away, he's likely to win the game, but it's not a lock. Mm -hmm. But if he thinks that Jaeger is likely to do this, then it becomes a lock. So Dane is going to get to take out the rest of the Alliance Eye Diamonds, and that's all well and good. But assuming Eric still has eight tendrils in his deck, and he has seven spells currently, the tendrils are just going to be lethal. And you see the mana floating, two red, two black. Yeah, this is a really sharp play here from Hawkins. Yep. Walked him right down this. The easiest thing to do would have just been to go get Ad Nauseam and assume that that would have been good enough to get the kill done. And he's probably over 90% to win the game in that spot. But he thought there was a, a good chance here that Jaeger would just fire off the surgical. And now here we are. So those LEDs are, they're gone for good. Yeah, Eric says, I'm going to get my tendrils and I'm going to kill you now. And you help me get here. That's spell eight. Eight times two? 16. 16. That's going to do it. Eric Hawkins is going to win this match here over Dan Yeager. Two games to zero. Number 10 on our Season 4 leaderboard picks up an impressive win. Storm takes care of Teamer Delver. And Mr. Hawkins is 5-0 and here in what's a very important tournament for him. And he just marched right through Teamer Delver. With ease, it felt like. And it wasn't like Yeager had bad hands. He had threats on turn one with counter spells. About what you would ask for for the matchup. But uh, Hawkins was able to get through it very, very easily. One discard spell. And a very fast kill, good sequencing, and enough to get it done. We were curious about what combo decks we would see this weekend. You know, we've seen.